Greetings, fellow citizens of El Segundo. I'll begin this show with a visual. Obviously, this is hard to do in a medium that is of the audio persuasion, but let us try this in defiance of that logic. There lies a road hidden in our town, a wicked road. It is surrounded by trees that are not from this locale, nor for that matter, of this time. They resemble rows and rows of countless burnt fingers, fingers that somehow stay upright despite the burnt husk of remains which mysteriously continues to support their vertical weight. At the end of the road, there appears to be some sort of out of focus white visage, human shaped and foreboding. To look at it causes dark stirrings of the mind. And now the news. Good news starts off this week as the mystery of the pink shadow is closer to being solved. The missing handyman of the El Segundo Scout House, Grant Bailey, is doing just fine. He was spotted checking his mail by a neighbor who knew of the recent story involving his ascension into the ceiling tiles of the local pharmacy. When questioned about these events, both by his neighbors and officials, he looked confused and would only offer time-stamped receipts of his whereabouts, proving, for now, that he was at the local car wash the entire time. Days and days of receipts. As unlikely and impossible as this sounds, his car, an older model Honda, is now completely void of paint, and his mileage reads zero. Not in numbers, but in digitally written letters. More on this story as it develops. Obviously, I mean, that's how reporting works. Sound pollutions continue to plague our area. The constant and near thunderous roar of dragonfire continues to disrupt our town almost nightly. As we previously reported, this sound scourge, according to, quote, experts, is explained by simple human aircraft flying over and nearby LAX. But seriously, how convenient is that, my listeners? At the risk of sounding like some conspiracy nut, I think anyone of an average IQ who tried to sleep one night in this sonic soup would have to yield that the sounds they hear after twilight are simply not of Earth. When pressed for an update, Mayor Blank simply offered coupons to the local brewery Upshift, which was a great red herring because their wide-open IPA will quiet all questions and leave the recently refreshed awash with a hoppy and happy mindset. On a curious note, we have over two dozen reports of a mysterious kite man who wears a sort of harlequin outfit from another era and walks with what appears to be aluminum-foiled shoes. Attempts to follow his travels are the real story for everyone that tries to do so, as evidenced by multiple cell phone videos on our Facebook and YouTube page, ends up awakening minutes later from an unnatural and sudden slumber. Upon waking, the curious-looking stranger is nowhere to be seen. However, each incident claims there was a tethered kite stuck to the earth at the very spot where he vanished. Listeners with information on the Kite Man should contact the Gundo Ghost at their earliest convenience. Seriously, we want to know any information you may have. He may be very dangerous indeed. Email us at thegundoghost at gmail.com. Finally, National recognition has come our way as FBI and CIA agencies have officially put our town on the watch list for the missing Church of the Fallen Shadow, a story we recently reported upon in the past. Mountains of irrefutable proof atop the obvious blank wooden sign at the corner of Grand and Main Street's church directory have the suits of our shadowy government agencies very on edge. 
Despite this national news, attendees of the vanished house of worship could not be located for comment, despite the all-reaching arm of the U.S. government. Not a single one. Well, that's it for this Gundo ghost. Stay safe, stay kind, and folks, beware of the kite man. <laughs>